Ah, all right, so here we have yet another Atari 800XLF. Uh, yes, there we go. So you can see XLF right there. And that means that it's an XL with a lot of the discrete um, 74 series logic replaced with a Freddy chip, which is down there. That's the GTIA chip. Uh, so yes, Freddy takes over uh, most of the functions. Basically the same uh, layout, um, logically speaking, functionally speaking, as the XL machine that came later on. Far lower chip count, probably cheaper to produce. The problem with these things is they're very, very quirky uh, boards. Um, much more so than the uh, XEs that came after. There are a few uh, little uh, errors uh, in the design, uh, which actually results, uh, one of the problems results in um, Freddy getting some very poor 5-volt uh, power. Uh, there's another video uh, from I think last year or the year before where I covered that where Jürgen came to the rescue I think uh, was it a Sophia machine or something uh, we were getting quite strange behavior now that may be uh, something to do with uh, the problem that we've got here we're going to turn the machine on anyway turn it on and what do we get uh, we go straight to the memory test here, so we appear to have a RAM issue, but we've also got another problem here, but we've got this sort of video issue as well. So we've got several issues here. Now since Freddy generates the clock, uh, the crystals fed straight into Freddy, and Freddy generates the phase, uh, different phase clocks for the system, I'm wondering if this pulsing effect here has anything to do with the uh, the power to Freddy issue. So it's found bad RAM. So I think the first thing we'll try and do is we will get out our trusty uh, syscheck board. So syscheck popped straight up, uh, testing memory. Uh, we do get color out of the uh, factory with these later revision 800 XLs, which is something. Uh, I think the red screen means it's found a problem. And the video glitch, is the video glitch still there? That seems to have gone away. Ah, this is going to be uh, annoying. Okay, so according to syscheck, we've got a bad DRAM. Uh, this being the column of interest, 800XLF. And if we look at the board, that should be this chip right here, which seems to be causing the problem. Now we've got a few other problems here, which uh, should catch our eye, is these bulging caps for a start. Uh, one there and one there. They are 470 mic, uh, 16 volt caps. Uh, and used for power smoothing. They're on big power traces there. So that could be causing a problem as well. We'll definitely replace those. And when we look at the RAM here, we've got Micron RAM chips again. Uh, these are, have a high failure rate, marked MT. So if you see these, uh, it's probably a good idea to replace them. I do have DRAMs on order from the Czech Republic, but I'm still waiting for them to turn up. So I don't have uh, replacements yet uh, when I do get them. We will socket all the RAM here and replace them with nice Tesla chips. To begin with, we'll just stick a socket under this uh, bad DRAM here and we'll replace these two caps and we'll see what that leaves us with. Okay, so we'll add some solder under this uh, dodgy DRAM. Get that taken off. Uh, whack a socket in there. So it should be the fourth one from the front. One, two, three, and four. So it's that one. Let's add a little bit of 60-40 on here. Alright, we seem to be up to temperature, now let's dive in. And we'll use a little bit of hot air to help this one off the board. Right, so I'm going to let that cool off a little bit and then we'll get some uh, flux on the board and we will go over this with some wick. I'm going to leave the uh, desoldering gun on standby because there's no guarantee that this is actually going to fix the board because there may be more than one bad DRAM on here 
uh, regardless of the fact that uh, syscheck is just telling us there's only one because although syscheck is doing a very good job it is taking a, a best guess at the uh, bad DRAM based on the position of the bits uh, that failed uh, the RAM test and flip-flopped around while it was uh, writing and reading values to the uh, system RAM. So let's uh, inspect this. That looks fine. So let's whack a socket in here. I'm just going to use some old, uh, just going to use some uh, standard machine sockets here. Nothing fancy. So we'll do the corners. I'll push down on the socket from the other side. Make sure it's nice and flat, and we'll double check that I got it on the right way around, which I did. And we go over the rest. Okay, grab a spare DRAM, and I do have some. Ironically enough, they're also micron RAMs, but uh, most of these do work. They were taken off a working machine, so I'm just gonna. Pop them right in there like that. Let's plug it back in and see what we get. And it boots. Oh, that was easy. Uh, but what about this video problem? I think the owner said it was intermittent. Now, maybe that we've, since we've had this machine running for a while, uh, these caps have started to behave themselves because they've. Uh, ah, here we go. Aha, look at this. That's really bad. Okay, so let's change these capacitors and see what happens. And it just so happens that we've got a set of replacement caps here that I ordered earlier. They're a little bit smaller than I would have liked. They're not quite the right uh, form factor, uh, but they are the correct value. And hopefully I can get them into the same holes here. They should do exactly the same job. Uh, more modern uh, part. So uh, let's take these old ones off. A little bit of flux on here, just so we can clean these holes out properly. So let's turn it on again. Now we've replaced these caps, and we'll see what we get, and see if we get this awful video problem. And we'll have to delve a bit deeper if we do. Uh, I'm hoping that we don't. The video looks really nice, actually. It's very, very nice. So let fingers cross. It's just righted itself and it was these caps. Let's have a look, closer look at these. Oh no, it's back again. It's back again. So we've still got this problem here. Do you have an Atari 8-bit computer that doesn't work? Or a 16-bit computer that doesn't work? Or perhaps you just like some upgrades installing to the highest possible standard of workmanship? Well, if that's you, head on down to atari.co.uk, click on the hardware uh, link at the top there and click on upgrades and repairs. And you can drop me an email or you can fill in the quote form and I will get back to you generally within 24 hours with a detailed response and a quote. And when it comes to the quality of modding and upgrades, uh, the workmanship is beyond reproach and without compare as evidenced by the testimonials we have here on the website, of which I will be adding more at some point, so you need not worry uh, when sending your precious vintage computer in uh, for me to work on it. And I accept domestic work here in the UK and work from overseas, and I'm very pleased to see that we have more and more people from abroad sending machines in for repairs and upgrades. Now while I am primarily focused on Atari computers, I'm also keen to branch out into different platforms. And for that matter, I also do component level board repair on PCs and laptops, so really, I've got you covered whatever you need, so please get in touch today at atari8.co.uk and uh, drop me a line or fill in the online form and I will get back to you as soon as I possibly can. And I look forward to hearing from you. Alright, so I'm not entirely sure that this strange video effect uh, isn't connected to um, 
the aforementioned uh, power supply issue to Freddy. Well, I'm not too sure actually, um, but let me show you. If we measure on pin 16 of GTA, now pin 16 of GTA gets the uh, PAL color burst um, clock fed into it, which is generated in this area here by uh, this crystal here. Um, I changed that crystal just for a laugh because it, it was free to do so. It didn't make any difference at all, but I've had one or two dodgy crystals in the past. Uh, it's very rare, but there you go. Didn't do any harm to change it. But anyway, let's have a look. So if we measure pin 16, so this is the color carrier clock input. So we turn the machine on here so that we've got a nice wave going on here. And the picture happens to be stable at the moment. Now if we just wait a little bit, and hopefully it's going to do it. Of course, it's an intermittent problem, so especially painful. Here we go, it's starting to do it now. So the screen actually has, if we move up a little bit, you can see the effect on the screen there. And the wave is going all over the place. So that would appear to be our problem. Now pin 28 is the clock input to GTA itself. Oh, let me get that. There we are. That looks reasonable. It's just not making contact very well. There we go. All right, so on a whim, after um, not really understanding why the um, color burst uh, clock signal to uh, GTA was all over the place, um, I decided to replace this fella here. Uh, now, this is a um, flip flop, I believe. So I uh, just stuck a socket under here, pulled uh, another chip off a donor board, popped it in, and let's have a look at what we get. Okay, so we're looking for these pulsing lines and uh, black lines and grey colour screen, weird blocky effects, and nothing there. So this is the third time I've powered this up since I replaced that chip, and... Uh, I still can't replicate the problem now, so it does rather look like that's fixed it. I was beginning to wonder if this factory fix for the Freddy power problem that Jürgen um, identified had something to do with this. But when I engaged my brain, which can sometimes take a while, and remember I'm still learning about uh, how to use this oscilloscope and... Uh, I'm not a, an electronics whiz kid by any stretch of the imagination. Um, I did actually ask Candle Sin, uh, Sebastian, on WhatsApp last night about this. And uh, he suggested to concentrate on this area. Because it is kind of isolated, this clock generator for the PAL signal. As long as it's getting power, uh, there's no real reason why something wrong with this should affect this. Because this generates the clock... Uh, that drives the GTIA chip at the system frequency uh, but this area here is what generates the uh, color burst signal um, so th there wasn't really any reason why the two should be connected in any way shape or form so uh, once I identified uh, with the scope the first time the scope's been used in anger for anything useful I have to say uh, once I saw all that noise on this pin here it looked like there was something wrong here. I did replace that anyway, because, as I said, it, there was no reason not to. I couldn't really see passive components going bad. I, I, that very rarely happens with these boards. First time the oscilloscope's been used in anger. Not for anything particularly complicated, but uh, it was instrumental in uh, telling us that the um, PAL uh, colour carrier uh, signal was... Uh, clock rather was uh, way off and I can hardly re recommend a basic uh, oscilloscope if you're going to try and do stuff like this and I hardly recommend as well a candle or a Jürgen uh, if you can afford one both very useful in conjunction with your oscilloscope and uh, thank you very much to Sebastian uh, for pointing me in the right direction here it should have been obvious to me really but th these boards are so nefarious uh uh, they're just yeah they're very very tricky and I'm, I'm 
I'm, I'm pleased to say that uh, as unsophisticated as some of the uh, troubleshooting may seem, uh, I'm not alone in being um, driven insane by some of these boards now and again. As I say, we've got manufacturing faults and uh, all sorts of strangeness with these things. I mean, the amount of bodges we've got here, we've got a... This is actually, I think, on the output from one of the transistors um, from the um, main crystal, we've got a, a cap that was supposed to go to this pad here. But it's been rerouted to the end of this resistor here. <laughs> we've also got this resistor going to the end of this cap. Um, I haven't actually traced this, but this this is coming from the Freddy chip. You can see that these boards with this whole design is transitional, and we're just trying to iron the bugs out by putting little patches here and there um, until they more or less got it right with the XE. But I mean, even the XEs have got bodge wires all over them. So yes, I hope you found that one interesting and or entertaining in some way. I'm sorry again for the for the uh, lack of videos lately, but I will try harder. And uh, this one's been quite fun, and it's nice to have a, a success. Uh, it was quite an interesting issue, that one. Bad RAM and a bad 74LS74. But uh, let's see what happens when we put the 512K SRAM upgrade in there, will we? <laughs> Before we get too uh, complacent. Alright, so thank you again uh, for watching, and thank you to the people who signed up on Patreon. Um, I hope they don't feel uh, too shortchanged by the terrible release schedule of these videos. And uh, I'm doing this full time now, repairing mostly old computers, um, but really anything that comes along. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, give it a like if you enjoyed it. Uh, consider subscribing. Uh, we are uh, gradually getting up to a, another milestone figure. I don't know how I do it really. I do, I do, thank you very much for sticking with this channel. I really do appreciate it. I must be doing something right if... Uh, if I can get away with being so sporadic with uploads, but uh, as I've, I've already uh, said, I'm uh, sorry about that, and uh, I'm going to try harder. So, um, thanks again, and I'll see you in the next video. So, bye-bye for now.